But can you enlarge it? Can you make it full? Just a button on top of your slides, if you can see it on top. That looks like a TV stand. Wait a the very top icons that you can see, there's one of them. Can you see on screen now? Yes, uh, perfect. All right. All right. So uh, if you can see right now, there is one sugar cane on my screen. And to me, what I could learn, and I've been talking, giving my talk to a lot of corporate and NGOs, all right, and uh, the, from small to the large corporation and the companies. So what I could see, and I could get it learned from my one uh, ancestors, you know, uh, and he has a very special kind of wisdom. And one day I asked him, uh, can you please define the leadership? And he says, I don't know about the leadership, but I know one thing about the leader. I said, what? And he told me leader is like a sugar cane. That's why like, I could pick up that story for you people. If you can look at the sugar cane, so sugar cane has a great story. If you look at the life story, once you sow its seed and it grows up and it becomes like the long, uh, 10 feet long uh, tree of sugar cane. And if you can see, if you can see it's a life story. So uh, here we have a great picture, if you can see. At the top, like there are, you know, the branches of that sugar cane and there's a middle part and then you see the roots part right and the most important part is the inner node what we where we can get the juice of it right so the purpose of sugar cane is to get uh the sweetness of it right and the greatest thing about sugar cane is because sugar cane from day one to by end of the day you know it's always useful if you see so the top branches, the top part of the sugar cane is mostly, once uh, it has a long life, means so you knock down the uh, tree of sugar cane, all right? So it's a long time when you grow it up and when it's been uh, available and it's the right time to take its juice when it's wrapped up. So what, what happens? You know, the top branches of the sugar cane is taken by the animals. So we knock it down and we cut up from the top part and we give it as a food to the animals. And we take it, it's a middle part and the roots part is still out there, which we uninstall later on and we use it to burn, to burn the sugar cane, okay? And then we transform from the sugar cane, the molasses, what we call it, the jaggery, you know, so what's the process? What happens? We take out that uh, sugar cane and the top part is taken by the animals. They love to eat it. And the lower part, we store it on a separate, right? We store it. And the middle part of the sugar cane, the inner node, it's, uh, it's gnawed. We put it into the crushing machine and we get its juice. And we make this process. We process it two or three times and then we get its juice. And then the lowest part, what we call its roots, we burn it and we pour the sugar cane juice in a big uh, colander and we put it up on and like on a burner, all right? So we, 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 we are using the lowest part. The upper part is taken by the animals and the lowest part is used to burn it, right? So what happens? We cook that juice and we convert it, we transform into the sugar. And if you see uh, the, the upper part, okay, and the north part, we just uh, scratch it and we use it for the animals. The lowest part is taken by, you know, we use it to burn it. So by end of the day, if we see, and when we take the juice, so the extravagant part, which is now the middle part, now it becomes extravagant part, and we burn it along with the roots. So now there is no more sugar cane. So the whole sugar cane tree is being utilized. 
we utilize it. And what we get from the sugar cane, we get its molasses, we get its, uh, we get sugar from it. And then we put the sugar in all eatable items, what we call it the sweet items, or we use it everywhere in our so many products. If you look at a story, so the sugar cane is no more there, but its sweetness is everywhere. And we can use a sweetness in all products. By end of the day, there is no sugar cane. It has a life. It had a life. But now, its life is over. We can't see sugar cane, but we can see its impact everywhere. And we love to eat sugar items. We we use that sugar everywhere. Sometimes we take it. Uh, byproducts, we use it in, in products directly, all right, but we are using that sugar everywhere, but there is no sugar cane. So that's what we can define the leader, and this is what the Jesus is, this is what the God is. We can see him, but he is everywhere in us on our life, you know, he is impacting in our life everywhere. So uh, it was the life of sugar cane, and we can learn it a lot. So, well, what I could learn from that my grandpa, you know, was the leader is. So the leader is nowhere. We everyone on the globe, like we, um, we enjoy its taste. We buy it, we sell it, and we can see so many products. You know, big sweating with the condensed uh sugar. Sugar is everywhere, like in the products, but we can't see it. By end of the day, there's no life of leader. There's no life of sugar. There's no lifestyle of it, but it's used everywhere. So leader is just like a sugar cane. So I, a lot of people, you know, they really appreciate and they adore uh, the guy I'm talking about. That's beautiful soul, Sundar Pichai. You know, when he was hired by the company, he was hired uh, almost like uh, right now, even you see, uh, he is charging uh, 167,000 uh, US dollars per month. And if you can see, uh, just in uh, 2023, he was getting 2 million per year. So why he was selected as a leader for the company, Google, like everyone, everywhere, like if you just uh, type something in a Google, so it gives you the millions of information, the millions of pages. So what was the quality in that beautiful soul, in that beautiful guy? I'm talking about the Sundar Pichai, why he was hired for the largest company. And I just want to share a story like why he was hired. So a lot of people, I would be expecting like, you know, the Google team would have been asking so many tough questions and maybe the Google company, I would ask him in like, how can you uh, win over the competitor? How can you increase the profitability? And how can you overcome the expenses? How can you reduce expenses? No, the Google team asked him very interesting question. Google team asked him, what was your biggest fear and how did you control, how did you overcome that fear? The most important question. And if, uh, if you are a CEO, if you are a company leader, so it's the greatest question for you. Uh, and it was, it's going to be like a good story. Sundar Pichai was given uh, almost 45 minutes. He was asked like, okay, you have 45 minutes and uh, you can give your presentation on that most important question that what was your biggest fear and how could you overcome that fear? So he said, uh, my biggest fear was my hard work. My biggest fear was my hard work because when I was growing up, because you know, you know pretty well, like he, uh, he born in um, a very vulnerable part in India where he born like, and he was uh, bringing water and he was helping his parents. He had a lot of uh, miserable life in the beginning in his life. And he was listening a lot of stories around it that uh, if you go to work hard, then you go to be bigger success. And I knew like maybe 99% of people believe in that if you go to work hard, if you go to be just workaholic, then you go to be the biggest success. And he said, my biggest fear was my hard work. And I was, um, I've been listening like a lot to my teachers, my ancestors, my parents, and 
everyone around me, like you were telling me, if you're going to be working so hard, you're going to be completely success. And he said, like, it was just a myth in my life. Why? Because uh, when I started on my company, I was living the same. So I was doing marketing, sales, research, and I was going doing like all kind of B2B and B2C, all kind of business. And I was looking at the administration. I was looking into each and everything for my company when he started off. So uh, I was looking and then I, because that, I believe me, like I gotta be working hard. So I was giving all my 100% time like to the company, but I was not getting that right outcome. So what I could do in that time, you know, I hired a team. And with the help of that team, I could get a lot of things done with my people. And I was taking the most impactful, the thing what I could do in my life. So I was doing, I was, uh, I downsized my work. I was even like going for the errands. I was doing each and everything for the company. But this time I, I was only one Then I took more people along with me and I, I delegated my work to my people and they started to work for me. And I just learned like how to get the work done from my people. So that was my biggest thing. I started to work in a team. And uh, later, you know, like when, so he was been, uh, been, you know, not been hired, he's been rejected by all top great Tycoon companies. But later on, just because of this, he was uh, hired for uh, the Google company because of this particular thing. And one more thing, I want to share right now within a quick uh, time because the Sundar Pichai, like he learned, he told them like uh, one more on, on to responding one more question. He said, I learned one more thing that I don't need to react, okay, to the things, to the problems. I learned like how to respond. So how it happens like one day he was just drinking a cup of coffee in the big barges a restaurant where most of the Americans like love to go there and love to drink coffee there. So uh, he was uh, taking a coffee and he noticed um, it was a great restaurant and it was uh, like quite neat and clean, all right? And uh, there was no noise in and mostly like he loved to get out there sometime with Angelie, sometime alone. So he was just taking a cup of uh, coffee and I think you need to increase your volume. Yeah. We can't hear you. Something changed with your voice. Can you increase your volume? Oh, yeah. It just changed just now, now. Okay, continue. We just have to... Okay. Oh, it's so seriously miserable when cockroach come into uh, the restaurant on the floor. But anyway, it came and it was flying here and there and it just sat on the one lady's shoulder because she was sitting calm and peaceful and she was just sitting so calmless, all right, so comfortable. And what, what happened, like that cockroach came and sat on uh, uh, her shoulder. And when she noticed that the there's a cockroach on my shoulder and she started to make a noise and she started to shout. She was crying and she uh, was so, you know, it was definitely, this was a hilarious situation. And, but in the meanwhile, what happened that cockroach flew from there and it came onto another man who was sitting so calmly and he was, uh, you know, like, you know, he was sitting peacefully, all right. So the cockroach came and sat on his coat and when that guy noticed on the cockroach, he did the same, all right? And he was crying, shouting, he was making a noise. And after some time, that cockroach flew from there and went on to another lady who was sitting so uh, peacefully. So what happened in the meanwhile, the Sundu, Sundu Pichai was looking at uh, the janitorial guy like who was standing in the door and he was just looking at him that why that uh, uh, waiter is not coming like to help. He was just looking at him and he was looking on the floor. And after some time, and he was standing just in the door peacefully and calm and he was totally moveless. 
he, he stopped moving. And what happened in the meanwhile, like the cockroach came across and flew and sat over his shoulder. And he just took the tissue paper from his pocket and he just picked it up and threw it from the window. So what was the story that we need to respond as a leader like uh, that waiter who was standing in the door, all right? And he was looking to, uh, he was uh, analyzing and he was looking at the situation like what's happening. What was the key? The cockroach was sitting only on the person like who was peaceful, who was calm, who was not really moving. So that's what he could learn that we need to respond. We don't need to react like everyone was reacting over that cockroach whenever he was coming over someone's shoulder or over someone. So uh, we need to learn one thing as a leader that we are supposed, we are born to respond. We are not born to react because we could have a lot of problems and challenges and situations in our life. So we could be responding. So I have one more story. I'm just moving to my that subject, my topic. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you have not joined yet, so you can join in uh, if you have joined right now. So there's a lot of things that are coming up for all of you in this uh, leadership uh, style of leadership in business. So uh, I met a guy. This this is what I could learn a leadership in my life. And it could really have an impact on my life. Why? Because we most of the time we feel like we today, we need uh, service arts in our business. And along with service arts, we have the skills. So we definitely, we can splash and we really can get everything, whatever we are looking forward. So there is a great story happened. I personally experienced that was used to go on one coffee at the tea shop. And there was a guy, uh, he was not having that, uh, great grass, but anyway, like it was, it was not so big a coffee shop. But I talked to him that uh, uh, I like your tea and um, that you are selling the tea. That's really a great business. And he told me, no, sir, I'm not selling the tea. I said, what? You're not selling the tea? And I told him, like you see, the lot of people that are like uh, they are sitting in your restaurant, your small restaurant, and they are taking your tea. He said, no, sir, I'm not selling a tea. I'm selling a hell. Wow. I said, how? How can you claim it that you are selling a tea? He said, why? Because I have my own animals. I have my own fresh milk. So I put, I put that milk into the tea. And that's why like, I'm selling a health. I said, then what will happen if you're going to sell a health? He told me that if I go to sell a health, the people are sitting up here, they're going to be more healthy. I said, then. He said, if their people are going to be more healthy, it means like they're going to be working more hard and more hard. I said, then. He said, if they're going to be working more hard, they would get more money. I said, then. He said, Eli, if they're going to get more money, they can give this money to the family, to the children, and they're going to be more happy. Again, success begins at home. I said, why? You know, what do you feel like if they're going to be happy at home? He said, if they're going to be happy, so that person would be more happy and the family at home, they're going to be more attention to him. And he can work more. I said, then he's going to get work more. And of course, like they're going to be more money and they're going to uh, be coming back to my this restaurant. So success begins at home. And we need to develop a service heart, okay, with a basic skills, okay, so the business skills. So here, I really need to code before we understand, like, uh, there are so many styles of for leadership in a business, all right? But before this, we need to understand the foundational work of leadership. So here, I need to uh, put some uh, five Ps from John C. Maxwell, Godfather of Godfathers in leadership. So the first leadership uh, position is a positional leadership. In the positional leadership, what happens when you get a job, when you get a seat, when you are appointed in an organization as a leader, all right, you get the leadership position. But I'm, I want to tell you, a lot of people in their life, they start from that leadership position, positional leadership, and they quit or they get to retire from that positional leadership job. Reason why? Why? Because they are not putting the right recipe into it. Leadership uh, is not about uh, 
that you get to work somewhere and you close or uh, at the same state, because this is what's happening all over the globe. We are really suffering uh, from these particular five foundational work on leadership. So if you get start your work on the position, so what happens? So the real purpose of all these leadership skills or to we get to work on these five Ps. So the basic purpose is to earn the real respect. So this is what uh, the real connection. So the real the real connection with your people, because if you have 40% people, if they are thinking like you, if they are ready to work like you in your company, it means like you are earning collaborability, you are earning that with, with, with that connection, you are earning that leadership. So the purpose of leadership is, especially when you're talking about the corporate context or in any business context. So we need to help. Being a leader, you come first because uh, with a leadership company falls and grows. So what is your uh, leadership? What what is uh, what is your level, right? So here you will find your level, all right? And then you will learn like, uh, what kind of style of leadership you can apply into the business, all right? So this is what, like, mostly people get started to work from the position level, and it means people going to follow you, okay? Why? Because they have a fear that if we are not going to follow to our leader, all right, so maybe we're going to be fired, all right? We So people, they are securing their job, and they are... Uh, not ready to quit from a company, all right, they have only this beautiful job. That's why, you know, they are always saving and securing that position. That's why they are supposed to follow their leader. So that's what not the leadership is, all right? I note in, even in today's world, the leadership definition is, is in crisis. But so here, a lot of people, they start their work from the position and they quit from the position. But being a leader, you need to help more people around you because you need to know what your inner circle and you can help them to grow with you. So uh, at the position level, you can't uh, you can't actually win the people's heart. People are not following you from bottom of their heart. Why? Because they are just managing their work. They are just supposed to follow you because if you are not following, you so you will quit from the job so that's why on the position level people are not earning the real respect the real connection and if you have no that connection of course the company won't grow so the next level is a permission level at this level what happens that maybe you have experienced with your employees and you've been working with them for last couple of years or maybe for one year so the time factor is the key out of here so with the passage of time, what happens, people start following you, people start embracing you, but still you don't earn respect at this level. Right? Why? Uh, because if you ask your uh, internal client, I mean your employees, if you ask them to stay at the office for some long hours, so they may be good to stay with you because now you have earned a little bit relationship at this level. All right? So... Even at this level, like there is no such kind of leadership. Still, we are suffering even at this level. So people, maybe you would ask them, okay, uh, we need to give some extra time. And uh, tomorrow I want you to come back before the time. Why? Because we have some tough tasks or more assignments. Why? Because now you have a relationship. So people are supposed to follow you, but still there is no leadership. Still there is no connection. Ser seriously, now there, even now there is no uh, this, uh, the bottom heart respect. So the next level is the production level. At this level, what happened? You 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 become like you uh, you perform, and because of you, uh, because you could contribute into your company, into the business, and people they have a little bit of respect for you. Why? Because my boss is good. My leader is great. Why? Because he is inculcating into the business, and because of him, we all are getting some bonus or the commission. So now people have little respect for you, but still there is no leadership. And next level is uh, people development. At this level, because you once you joined in a company or in a business, you were not so much trained and you came up with a certain kind of skills, but now your leader is supplying and providing you 
the development, training and development, and you feel uh you you're feeling like I am not the same person. I'm really bringing more skills into my life, and you start giving little respect to that leader. But still, there is no respect. Still, there is no no leadership out there. So that's the final level. Like we, everyone needs to understand as a leader, that is a pinnacle level. At this level, what happens, even leader isn't there in the company, right? And maybe he is uh, busy somewhere, but still people in the company, they are working in that credible, in the credibility, because now you have in all that trust as a leader and the people, they, they get ready to work extra and they work for you now and how can you earn this pinnacle level because uh by the end of the day uh your basic job is to earn that pinnacle level all right so that's a personal level uh and it only can happen when you start helping people in the personal domain uh most of the time like the pinnacle level leaders they are ready to attend the birthday parties of their internal clients they are ready to attend uh, their funeral ceremonies, even they are uh, ready to question them for their personal challenges, what they are facing up at home. Why? Because by end of the day, everything happened with a service heart. So uh, with a service heart, you can uh, really win the people's confidence and people's attention, and people will trust you more, and their self-esteem would be very high for the company, and they would be giving more contribution. They uh, uh, they're going to be given extra because now you have a connection and they feel people, internal clients start feeling like, okay, so the boss is great. He's always looking into my personal issues. So by end of the day, the personal connection matters a lot, whatever the size of organization and whatever the, the nature of organization is. So being a leader, there's one beautiful law and that's a law of the lead. Uh, the law of lead mean what is the level of leader, what is his capability and competency. Because the law of lead says, I'm just assuming like there is uh, it's a leader, all right? And on my left hand, there is, uh, maybe you can see it's a right hand, okay? So it's a right hand, so, but this is a business, all right? So the law of lead says, because your business, size of your business will grow only when the level of leader is high, all right? So leadership falls and gets high on the level of leader. So being a leader, leaders are never perfect. So they're always growing up, no matter what, like they're always ready to learn. They're always ready to go on to the next step. So the law of leads say, because first we need to understand what is the lead of leader I mean what is the capability of leader so i'm just assuming like the, if there are the 10 points so leader needs to know what is his lead because if there's is a lead it means and this is a business so if the level of leader out of 10 if he is acquiring level of five or level of two so the business would never go higher than your lead than your capability you know then uh your personal uh, ability because ability matters a lot here so we have to work a lot on our developing the ability so ability is this like the lead okay and if the leader is on um, lead number five because there are 10 points all right so as the leader is growing up and up so the business level is going up and up and if the leader level is going up like this much the 10 so of course so the business level would grow up it can't cross your level of lead. So you need to know as a leader, like what's your lead level? What's your number? All right, so the most important thing being a leader, you need to develop is first you need to know what's your lead level. And question number two is you need to make an assessment about it, right? What's mm -hmm. your level? And and then you must, you, you, you're gonna be ready to develop yourself. You're gonna be ready to increase, to get its, uh, its higher and higher, right? You know, you're gonna work on yourself a lot. So at the same time, your business stuff narrative will grow up. So if the level of leader is not going up, so the level of business is definitely would be coming down. So next 
I think what you need to know is the word is the level of lead of the people you have in your inner circle. Because the, I told you like 40% people in your company must be thinking like you. They must be your reflection. Even those people, because they're thinking like you and you have developed them as the greatest, the person who level leaders in your company. They are thinking just like you and they are quite aware with the vision, with the mission, and the goals, and the processes of the company. So they are quite understood with it. And you ask them about your lead, right? Because they're going to be your reflection, and you're going to be their reflection. So they are ready to grow up with you. And if you have 60% people in your company, if their lead level is just like you, so I want to tell you, then you become Toyota, Honda, you become Microsoft, you become Apple, and you become the top tycoon company. So you get everyone informed about you. So you need to work on the lead of the people. First, you need to know what's their lead level. And then you must provide training to them to grow up and to improve their lead because it's all about the leverage, what you are getting by lifting you up as much you got to lift you up yourself, your company would definitely would grow up and would be lift up to that situation. You know what happens? Uh, different uh, top, top, top tycoon companies, what to do in their business. If, if you see uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, we all are so much thankful, the greatest guy. So what kind of capability and abilities they have developed in their life. Even the Sundar Pichai, and if you see uh, uh, the Mark Zuckerberg, if you see Bill Gates, if you see Warren Buffett, all top tycoon companies, they have one thing very common in their life. They are ready to be criticized. What's they, what, what they have developed, and they, they, are not, they are not helping their company to grow up from failing to success. They are helping their company to grow from excuses to success because as a leader, you are ready to excuse, you are ready to embrace. If you're making mistakes, you are ready. So what the Toyota or the all top companies or the uh, uh, the Facebook, uh, the chairman, Mark Silver, what they do, what they have, whatever they come up with any idea to develop their company, whenever they, they hit an idea, so they come onto the, uh, the meeting board and they write an idea over there right on top of the board and then they ask they are ready to be criticized by the people all right their inner circle whether all even the company leaders they are ready to be criticized they ask them hey please this is a problem all right this is a problem statement so i want you to criticize me and help me to go and to conclude better things the same thing is happening in the toyota in Toyota, if you can't find out mistakes from the processes, if you can't criticize the processes, you are out of the work. You're going to be out of the work. Why? Because you have been hired as a leader to criticize the work. The positive criticism is, is, is required to, to criticize the process. Why? Because in a company, you want to get best out of that company, the best idea they want to float into the market. So this is what happened once uh, Sundar Pichai one day, uh, he was invited in uh, the in a party at night and he was supposed to attend the party at eight o'clock and he talked to Angeli. Uh, Angela like, okay, here we are invited in the party, so you please go from home. I would come from the company. All right, and they decided, so uh, right at eight o'clock, so the Angeli went onto the board, went into the party, and when Sundar Pichai, you know, he was coming on the way, he lost the way. He lost the way. And when he lost the way, and he got late, and he reached in the company at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, when he, uh, he took the call from Angel, Angel said, I, I just got back home, the party is over, and he came back home, and Angel like, had a, <laughs> a big great fight with her. And the reason of fight was why, because why did you, Got late because we you were invited. I was just accompanying you, and and he said because I lost the way. And that night, like actually never allowed to like to uh, stay at home. And uh, soon they like went back to the office, and the whole night he was thinking about like what I can do, what could happen. Like a lot of people, if they were, uh, if they were lost their destination the way, so what would happen? Maybe they would have the same feeling. They would 
I'll be going through the same miserable situation. Well, the next day he invited all the leader and he told them the issue like, this is what happened with me. So we need to find a solution. Like if someone is traveling and, you know, can't find a way and, and you know, people are suffering, if you can't find your proper way. So you can't be reaching on to the destination in time. So uh, they, they spend almost a more than 80 hours and they can find that uh, Google Navigator. And now you can travel everywhere uh, you can put that navigation in your car and it's telling you like wherever you want to go. It can tell you, even it can tell you where are you sitting right now if you ask that Google Navigator. So I believe the, the leaders like they are innovating the stuff and things on the basis of feelings and emotions and other things. This is what the most missing part I, and I missed in, in my last training. So this is what I want to share. So the law of leader, we need to, uplift as a leader ourselves, and we are never perfect. Uh, there's only leaders are imperfect in the world. So the law of lead would help you to lift your company. So you're gonna work in more and more on the leadership on your lead. Okay, so here is uh, one more law. Uh, this is the law uh, of E.F. Hutton law. It's out of uh, uh, the 21 irrefutable law from the John C. Maxwell. And according to this law, the leaders are listened. All right. So uh, the E.F. Hutton was uh, the financial broker. He had a company of E.F. Edward F. Hutton Company. And they, uh, they pitched in one TV commercial. And from that TV commercial, he got the popularity that E.F. Hutton uh, is listened. All right. So people are ready to listen in. And they, he got that uh, popularity and uh, they extracted that particular line that uh, the EF Hutton is listen, all right? So when EF Hutton talks, people listen in. So because of this law, so being a leader, you need to develop that particular capability that you must be listened. And you only can be listened once you are polite. The biggest thing like we are missing uh, this is the dilemma in today's world being a leader. We are not being properly listened because people only listen to you once uh, uh, till you are polite. Then once you're not polite, people stop listening to you, right? So we need to develop kind of communication skill like how to be listened. And definitely your body language matters a lot. Even today's uh, world, I have trained uh, so many uh, corporations in the secret companies and they understand people through the body language, how to understand people because body speaks 93% and there are only 7% words. So you need to develop some intelligence like uh, when people talk, so how do they use their hands? Like if you notice I'm using my hands, like uh, it seems like, you know, I'm more sincere to my client and to my listeners. So you your hands always work like this. But if I put my hands uh, like top upside down, so it shows a superiority So people, uh, are not just men, but people understand you. It, it's a power, it's an energy, what you can reflect uh, over the people, like how do you talk, if you're talking to the people. I know leaders have a different kind of body language, why? Because when leaders listen, they look somewhere else, they never look into your eyes, because when they feel like when they get a look into your eyes, it's uh, like they are followers. So when father listen, they look into your eyes. So I uh, need to know, like the leaders have a different body language when leaders uh, listen, they always uh, look around, okay, and they don't look into your eyes. They have a different, their congress is different. But at the same time, the leader, people listen to you through your body, how your body talks. This is what I could experience with a different kind of CEOs. They had a different walk once. Uh, you know, like there are 100 people like sitting up, uh, standing up there. So you easily can recognize who is the leader because the leader has the very confident body language, all right? And uh, if you see that they are always, you know, they are always ready to give you, right? Like the Jesus, they're ready to give you, they forgive you, and they forget. So leaders have a different kind of tone. Leaders, like you can recognize leaders by their questions because leaders have uh, different kind of questions, right? And these, uh, these always help you to grow up by questioning. I personally had an experience working on the leadership position and I, I personally experienced like I had a very different communication and I helped uh, the people to grow around me. And then I have been deployed to another facility, another facility because I was giving trainings to all my people. I was empowering them. 
I was barely getting my lot of things because I had a scene like if I have 10 things. So I've, I've been like delegating my work to, to the people. Even they had no that certain capability, but I trained them for it, right? And I trust them. I trained them and I trust them and then I followed them. And I've been asking them, what are you gonna do like if in the situation, if this, if, if something happens, like uh, uh, ill structured problem because uh, the leaders uh, in corporate, you know, the, they are spending a lot of money on communication. So what happens in communication, mostly people, leaders know like what they're gonna do like in certain situation, but they have no idea if something unseen or unpredictable happens or the coming into uh, their, their thing. So there people again need to go back onto the board. So we need to, as a leader, like we already had designed so many and it's our job as a leader to uh, to go inch by inch to design like what kind of uh, situation can come. And then we need to design this like how to deal with this. So I, I empowered the people around me and uh, they started to work. Even like uh, the guy, like he was not much educated, but I told him like how to even go for the emails. So he started to send email for another guy like I make him responsible how to look into the administrative work. All right. So administrative work was divided into the different people. All right. So uh, it's all about like how do you see how do you see the organization and the company and definitely the people because organization is by the people. All right. So we have to work with the people and we have to empower them by equipping them with all kinds of, of solutions because leader is a solution. Okay. So the law of respect, uh, what the missing factor from today's world, why? Because uh, a lot of employees in, uh, in, the, in the leaders in the company, they are missing one factor that is a respect. So uh, they feel like we, we don't feel great while the people are shouting at us. So being a leader, we need to bring a lot of respect into our work. Uh, what I could see in the corporate, because it's always very abusive, all right? So law of respect doesn't mean like respect never goes from bottom to the top. No, respect always come from top to the bottom, all right? So being a company leader is your job to give respect to your junior. And his responsibility is to give respect to his or her junior, right? So respect, uh, if you look at uh, its uh, diagram, so respect always come from top to the bottom, all right? Uh, because already 90%, 80% of workload is always, you know, been shifted on to the 10% people or the 20% people of the company. So we need to uh, give respect from to our super junior and it must come from top to the bottom. Well, so... Let's look at uh, the leadership styles, okay? So uh, every leader, so uh, at the same time, sometimes you can make a bunch, all right? So you need to learn because leadership is about a practice. Leadership, again, is a choice, okay? So uh, you're gonna be working with the people and you learn one skill, one business uh, leadership style and you can apply, you can practice with your people because leadership is a style. It's like uh, action, okay? So your action will reflect like what kind of leader you are, all right? I knew one guy, uh, his father started a company with 40 people. And after 40 years, the same people are working in the same company. In last 40 years, they never, not a single person is quit from that company. They all are working together like a family, you know? And they all work like a team member. Here, we really need to talk about the team player or the team leader, because as a leader, you are a team player, all right? And it is just like, and uh, like if you see the sports, if you see the cricket, it's very popular on subcontinent in the UK, you know. So in cricket, like what happens if the batsman like play a shot? So, and if one fielder is missing from, he's missing the ball, so the other fielder, like he leaves his position, he's ready to leave his position, and he comes and picks up the ball. He is stopping that boundary. So the point is in a team, okay, in a leadership team, so you're already ready, you, you are there to back up your people, all right? Well, so uh, so the key of, uh, 
Our today's uh, style of leadership in our business is there are two things what we are getting massively focused. Number one is a decision making, and number two is meeting the deadline. Because by end of the day, we are we are supposed to work for external client, being a management and internal client, they are working together, all right? They must work like a family. And being a leader is your job like to take care of people like working with you, all right? Your internal client, because we all are together. If the external client is buying any stuff from uh, the company, so he is also buying the stuff for the intimate relationship. So there are three most important clients and they are working into the triangular, you know, uh, internal client, external client, okay, and the intimate client. We all are together here for the intimate client, and we want to give them everything ready at the top quality, all right? So we, so the two things we really need to know at a human being a leader that today, what we, the styles we're going to learn, like, so always remember, we're going to talk in perspective to decision-making and meeting the deadlines, all right? So we're going to give everything uh in a proper way okay all right so there are uh different styles of leadership in business so uh all leadership all leadership styles like can be implemented in a different kind of business so we will discuss a little like how they work for your company in the business so number one is the democratic uh or the participative uh leadership and i personally have been experienced this I always invited my inner circle people and the people around me. I always wanted to get the feedback or to make a decision, though it gets a little late, but you have to be a little preemptive and, you know, you get to be a uh, bit, uh, you have to take initiative a bit early because by the end of the day, you have to create a dependability. And along with dependability, you have to uh, create the things before the time. Okay. So democratic uh, leadership uh, have certain ingredients. If, you are a democratic leader, or if you want to meet people in your uh, corporation, in your company, so you need to know, like these are, this is the recipe, okay? This is the recipe of democratic style. Number one is the inclusive and the participative. It means you invite your inner circle people or the people, uh, internal clients, you gotta invite them and uh, if you gotta uh, make any, any kind of decision regarding the production or sales, sales or the marketing or the research, okay? You want to revamp your organization. So you first uh, take people around you. So you, you it's an inclusive type of uh, leadership style and it's more collaborative, okay? You work like a team, you work like a family and you invite everyone to participate and give their opinion and you are ready to be listened. And then uh, the, the third characteristic, like uh, uh, the democratic leader or the participative leader is the effective communicator, all right? So uh, the communication is the key. And in last 100 years uh, of what uh, we could, as, as a trainer, as, as an English language interpreter, what we could learn is the, the, the worst thing like we couldn't do in our life is like we have not learned like how to communicate because uh, we don't know how to speak to the people. And like in NLP, like here I, I will really move a little talk about the NLP. What happens? The morning time is not a great time for the meeting because in morning time, uh, the person's brain working very sharp, okay? And the people, because the mind is speaking, we get a divided in three parts, so the super conscious, all right, the super brain and uh, the subconscious. So we, most of the time, we live in our subconscious. So in the morning time, the super conscious is very much active, all right? So the super conscious is 20%, which is 100% active. So morning isn't a great time like go for the meetings. The great time for the meetings to make decision is the evening time, because with the passage of time, we get, uh, 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 we get a little sluggish because we are growing up with the sun and we are really going down with the sun, all right? We are also setting. So with the passage of time, we get into our external prime time. Internal prime time is when you get up, you are much, you are feeling, you, you are much energetic. You are feeling so, so powerful in the morning. Uh, so the morning isn't a great time, okay? Like uh, if you want to get, we, I, we've been doing like this biggest mistake uh, while, uh, we uh, like if you have a meeting so if we if you want to win 
uh, over some meeting, what could we do external clients or better uh, to don't offer someone like for the cold drink always, uh, to don't offer any kind of uh, the hot tea or the coffee and always offer them with the cold drink because that like the person, you know, really comes down and get back into that 80%. So that's the best time like to win over uh, that uh, and you can influence it more. So we the NLP also playing really, really, really a pivotal role in leadership and uh, definitely emotional intelligence. We need to know like how do people feel in different situations and how do you feel and how to respond to any kind of a query or any kind of situation. Well, so in a democratic uh, or the participative uh, leadership, there is always a trust building, okay? You all are together, empowered, and you all are looking in the same direction and you want to win already uh, something great, okay, with the help of company. So uh, this style also has a sportive and the empathetic uh, environment being a leader, so you are more sportive. You're always asking and a good following up with uh, uh, to your internal client and ask them like, how can I help you? You're always asking them, how can I help you? You're always ready to listen, all right? And you always accept the greatest things from someone, right? So it's all about like the vision. And uh, in top companies where people, the inner circle is bigger. So are there mostly people believing to go with the democratic, in, you know, like the Apple or uh, the Microsoft or, um, uh, the space tax over there the people are democratic people have certainly like have acquired uh, the same level of skills all right so there they love to work in uh that uh approach so in democratic there are there can be with a little variation there can be some certain more uh leadership style this we can call it the collective leadership okay in collective leadership they all get together like it happens uh, in a Google, like the people decide and the people get together because they have to work together. They look at all uh, the boundary spanning and all the processes together and they decide it and they get to the better conclusion. Okay. And the democratic leadership and the license fair leadership, and later on we get to see in details about the license fair. Uh, it's uh, the very popular leadership style or the Warren Buffett because he has uh, developed the greatest companies all over the globe. and. And the people working with them is like have played this uh, amazing role. So out there they have the different, uh, they are also democratic, but with the license fair leadership style. So there's one more, the consensus uh, decision-making, like it, it's, it looks like the democratic, democracy me like if, uh, if, if there are 10 people and seven people, six people says like, uh, we're gonna do in this direction and other four people. So they are ready to listen and they go for like the, in, in a democratic way. Okay, so the autocratic style is unlike to the first one. And in the autocratic uh, style, it mostly you see in uh, where the organization, they go through the crisis, all right? So the key is crisis. If you are going, if, if you're, your company, if your business, or if you are a government, if you're an army, if you're any kind of organization. So if you are going through this certain kind of crisis happens in your life, then you have the autocratic leadership style. Why it happens? Why? Because uh, and you know it's uh, in, in, uh, if you see it's the communication. It's always works from uh, from uh, the top to the bottom. Like always, instructions come from from the top, and there is no excuses. All right, and by end of the day, by hook or by crook, you are supposed to take actions on the instructions. All right, which is coming from. On the top. So there's a little bit uh, autonomy with the team members. They are not so much empowered in that particular way. Why? Because uh, the top uh, uh, leaders out there, they feel, they, they feel much empowered and they feel like we can make a better decision. So, uh, and here, like the resistance to the feedback or the criticism isn't uh, uh, appreciated in this particular style. So autocratic style says like there's a totally control, you have a control over the organization. So T is crisis. Okay, the next is the delegative or the license fair style. In this style, what happens, your company is large, okay, and uh, the company is really skilled very high. The people are working like uh, 
um, the great with the great skills and the knowledge. Like if you see the Berkeley Shire Company or uh, the Warren Buffett Company, you see like they believe in working the delegated because they already have uh, a court and have you know the people working out there. They they have immense uh, abilities and the capabilities. So out there, the delegated side works in a bad, better way. So there's not not much involvement uh, there from the top. They just give any kind of idea like we are supposed to get this done. So people already knew like how to get it done. So they don't get much involved in these kind of things. So there is a limited guidance or direction or the feedback from the top company. So all top great company, the top tycoon companies, they have this kind of uh, style. And then we see the middle minimal uh, interference or no need of controlling uh, to control the organizational uh, kind of uh, departments or the work. So that's uh, the beautiful one. And here again, the people are have a lot of knowledge and skill. That's why they don't need to be controlled. They just, they already know the process in each and every time. Okay, so next is the strategic leadership. And according to this, like the key is the motivation influence and the guidance uh, is given by the organ, you know, to, to achieve that, you know, they have, uh, the guidance to help achieve an organizational goal. So motivation and influence and guidance is there. I feel like here uh, in strategic, like this is a company where the if you go to hire not very highly experienced people, so out there like this, it's gonna be great. And uh, the top leaders, like they're always helping other leaders like to go in uh, to achieve the organizational goal. So the basic characteristics of this company uh, are like uh, the, the foresight to look forward to to look toward uh, to uh, uh, to look toward uh, the future of the organization because they have clarity like what's the future of it. So everyone is growing up, you know. Uh, they whatever they start from this company from the position level or from any kind of level. So the next is the open communication with their employees. They talk very freely and openly. Uh, uh, with uh, this strategic uh, leadership style. So you're going to be choosing your leadership style and you need to know better like what is the size and what is the level of your company. And with the, uh, once you scale up your business, so you accordingly will choose your uh, leadership style. So here, uh, the, the constant drive to make improvements, both oneself and the organization as well, like they are helping, they are equipping the leaders and they are giving that kind of, environment where like where the people can go here like you need to work more on your internal client to get that result from your external client so so uh, most of the time like the sales managers like they gather a team together to give the motivation speed so here sometimes because the motivation level is down so they always pump up people like to get uh first off to get the better results for the company to achieve the company's mission and goal and most of the time uh, the companies like if they want to achieve something within no time, so they have the strategic leadership style. Okay, so uh, there is a transformational or the visionary style, and I personally believe in this uh, because if you are hiring a person uh, who is not replacing you after a couple of years as a leader, so you haven't worked like with them, all right? So uh, even a student or even like your internal client, if you know hire them, so they must replace you after a couple of years. So there are four eyes you need to understand here if you are transformational regional leader. So number one is idealized uh, influence, all right? Number two is inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation and individual consideration. So you, you work with the people uh, in collective and at the same time you work with them alone as a leader, you help them to grow. Because if people start with you at your company, the position level, it's your job to help people to grow and to grow from position to uh, the next level, okay? To the relationship level. This we call permission level, okay? So being a leader, you help people to travel and to grow from one level to another level and by the end of the day, you have to create 60% people like you. 
So, but everyone in your company is on a different level. So it's your job to work with them and stimulate with the more and more intellect, okay? And inspire them by doing something great. So that would help you to achieve uh, your vision, your goal and your mission and your deadline. So I would acknowledge to the visionary leaders, like they help their company a lot and, um, a lot of great uh, stories are there, like they transformed their company from beginning and to they later on, like they became the top companies in the world. So the next is a transactional leader. So this okay. is a, Dr. a managerial Dr. Mike, part of... Hello. Dr. Mike, can I ask you to round up, please? Because we still have another speaker coming in. So right. if you can round up, please. All right. So, but so we, can... we, st we still want to see all the slides. So, if you can stroll it down, all right, so please, even five if it's seven minutes, I, I get it concluded yes. right now. With the yes. transactional leadership, what happened being a leader? So, you transact, it means you give a consideration to your internal client, and in response, you get something. Like, if you ask your uh, internal client, if you're going to achieve this, or we're going to arrange your foreign tour, so you give a motivation. You, you bring the contingent reward or recognition that you're going to become the man of the month or man of the year. You will get certain bonus and commission with the help of this transactional leadership. It also applies, especially like when we've been working in, in the business process, outsourcing, it worked a lot out there. And we achieved the biggest goal and, and the very top goals in our company. The next is the coaching leadership. The coach is my most favorite why because we right now in our company we need a service heart and we need the coaches who can help people and to go along with their internal client coach is just like a person like you see soccer cricket or any kind of sports one team wins they love to go to their coach by end of the game why because they want to give all the credits to their coach and coach is very happy he is really beaming for the success of their the company's internal client they love to see their internal client winning all right so the coaching leadership because they eat at the end they always help people to accomplish more and more in the company so this is an amazing amazing uh coaching style the leadership style so here we need the compassion self-awareness we need empathy into our work collaborate more and more and need to know uh, about the performance and the scaling of the person Okay, and then the communication matters a lot. What kind of communication uh, can help you like to achieve what you? Know? So, so the next is a bureaucratic. It's much like uh, you know the autocratic style. It's a bureaucratic uh, because again here uh, uh, the decisions are centralized. You know everyone is not allowed to participate uh, in decision making, or everyone is not allowed to make decisions. So a clear chain of command is there. It's clarity. Like if I will get some. Uh, instruction or the order from the top, so I'm supposed to follow this up in at any condition. The next is the pace setting leadership. In this leadership, you help your internal client by giving them motivation, or you always like Tony Robbins. You love to raise the people's standards, okay? And you always raise uh, the high performance standards by leading uh, examples or uh, by giving some result orientation. And the preference for speed and efficiency is out of here because you want to get something within no time. You have limited time and you have to achieve something bigger than the box. Then you go with this pace setting leadership style and you work like a coach, as a motivator, as an influential. You come up with a lot of things. Next is the situational leaders. We see a lot of situational leaders uh, in different companies like the Paul Harris says, the co-creative of the situation leader model uh, is the people differ in their ability and their willing. Ability and the willing are the key points here. We need to understand them. So we have to bring so many things into our leadership. Sometimes are uh, you going to be bureaucratic? Sometimes you're going to be motivational or the coaching style. So you're going to be uh, choosing that situational uh, leadership. It brings a lot to the leader. And you really need to do other leadership style as well, like if you want to get your things done. So uh, there are five models uh, for the leader. If you want to uh, train one person, because here it's very important, like because uh, you need at least 40% people in your company, okay, they must be at your level. So level number one is a modeling. 
you got to do it, okay, and the person you are training got to see you. And the mentoring, at this level, you will get that person to do it and you will see. And then you will get, you will just see him doing it, okay? Then you need just monitoring. So the first three steps are more important. Then you need motivation and you will see, uh, you will replace. So the person trained will become model and another person will come and see. So this is uh, five strategies uh, for the leaders they can apply to train more leaders into their company. So highly appreciated for your time. I know uh, you have more speakers around you and they get to uh, be speaking more. I'm feeling so honored. Thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity today to uh, give my talk on the leadership. Appreciate it. Wow, wow, wow. What an interesting that you've really, really see us you know go take take us through to understand in depth on leadership i like the way your style i like the way you started with a story to prepare our mindset and also to to put us in a situation in a position of curiosity what is he going to talk about now <laughs> 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 you know, like, you know, I, I mostly love it. the goose bumping style, like always, oh, hey, just put you to be play, you're going to do it. Right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly the point. I like your style of presentation, which it's is a, excellent. It's a choice, seriously, it's a choice. Yes. Even sometimes, a lot of people say, hey, Mike, where you get this energy? Where you get this energy? I, I don't know. Mm. What I get on any project or anything, so I don't know where I get yes. this energy. I yes. get connected with special kind of energy. So this work uh, really helps and motivates me and motivates other people. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, will you be able to Thanks. put the slides down? And let's see. Can you those... please open up the screen? Uh... No, uh, put the slide down, sir. Your slide. Your slide is still oh. on the show. If you can okay. close your...